Hello folks, in this video I'm going to run through a bunch of useful tools and websites that can help you get started in World of Warcraft's true endgame. That's collecting stuff. From mounts through to pets, toys to transmog and achievements, World of Warcraft has grown to have a vast array of collection related options. So much so that I even see folks say that it can be a bit overwhelming and hard to get started. Now in this video, I'm going to run through a bunch of useful add-ons and websites that can make the job of collecting stuff a lot easier. If you're struggling to figure out how to get started, towards the end of this video, I'll kind of explain how I got started into collecting and share how I managed to set goals to try and help to make it a bit more manageable. But I know that many of you who will be watching this video are likely to be collectors and won't be very interested in that side of it. So I'm going to go through the tools first so that you can dip out of that more ranty section at the end if you prefer. First up is the website that's probably the most useful source for anyone who's new to collection. That's Simple Armory. Simple Armory is a minimalist website that shows your progress in the many forms of collectibles and presents the various collectibles in logical groups, which helps a lot with planning out what you want to chase. For example, if you want to chase all the reputation mounts in a given expansion, you'll be able to see at a glance what you're missing. Clicking through in those empty boxes takes you through to the relevant web head page where you can dive into guides and how to go off and get them. Now one of the most popular things to collect in the game is of course mounts and Simple Armory also has the awesome mount planner. This provides a customised route around old instances and raid bosses to have a go at getting a few of those juicy mounts. And if ever you're just wondering, you know, what should I collect first, I'd actually recommend this as a bit of a great starting point. Now, a quick honourable mention here on the collecting front goes to Wowhead. Now, Wowhead isn't just a collection focused site. One of its biggest strengths is the comments section where pretty much every page for every item in the game will have some useful comment that tells you how to go and get that item. So anytime you want to get a specific item and you want to just go, well, how do I go and get it? Wowhead is definitely the place to go for that. Next up, Warcraft mounts. This site displays the mounts in Warcraft group by very broad categories. If you're looking at chasing mounts by types instead of the source, this is potentially a better site to work from than Simple Armory. It also has the advantage of displaying all the mounts in a high res format, which is really good if you're just looking to research a cool mount that you'd want to chase just because it looks good, for example. Now over in the pet collecting side, there's an equivalent site called Warcraft Pets. Now this site does also cover the gameplay side of pet battling, but even if you're just looking to get the collection just to pad the collection number, this is still another good site for researching the pets and other sources. But now let's jump into the world of Warcraft add-ons. Now a ton of collectibles in World of Warcraft are dropped from the open world rares. While, while you can go off and camp rares in a targeted way, their unpredictability means that you may not want to take the risk of missing a rare when you're off about in a zone doing other stuff. Maybe, for example, when you're doing your world quests. And that's where the add-on Rare Scanner comes in. Rare Scanner will display a warning and a pop-up whenever a rare NPC or a rare container appears in the area. The add-on uses a ton of different methods to try and detect them, which makes it less likely that you'll miss a rare you're chasing if it just pops up. Now, Rare Scanner isn't the only add-on that does this. There's another also popular add-on called Silver Dragon. And while I haven't tried that, I suspect its popularity means it is potentially a good alternative. Now, these add-ons do have one big downside. In the more modern zones, there's so many rares popping up that these add-ons can be popping alerts all over the place. And if you're not specifically wanting to farm all the possible rares in an area, I personally find that the frequency of the alerts means that I get so accustomed to the pop-up that I fell into the trap of ignoring the alerts when the ones that I did care up popped up. Now, fortunately, Rare Scanner does have a bunch of options to allow you to target specific rares, and I personally strongly do advise that you do use these. I find the tool is far more useful if you're only getting the alerts that you care about. Now, while you can manually set up all the rares, it 
also offers a very powerful filtering option where, for example, you can ask it to just only enable those rares of collectibles you're missing or even to target specific collectibles like mounts. Now, personally, my default setup is to filter it down to only rares that drop mounts. But I also use the profiles feature to set up a few other optional profiles I can use situational. For example, I have one that tracks all the forbidden reach rares for when I'm, you know, trying to do that that quest to get a couple of rares. Now the next add-on isn't one that's specifically intended for collectors, but if you're the type of collector that doesn't just want to stop with what you can get in your main, but you also want to collect stuff across other characters, then I recommend giving Altaholic a go. Altaholic's basically a database that tracks info about all the characters on your account and allows you to check in on them from any character. For example, this is a really great tool if you're wondering which character has a specific item that you need. Now next up is Handy Notes. One of the challenges when it comes to finding stuff is knowing where to go. Now Handy Notes is an add-on that makes it possible to put additional points of interest in both the main map and the mini map. Now, on its own, Handy Notes doesn't actually have much info built in, but it's designed to host plugins, and there's a ton of plugins out there that you can include to add a bunch of stuff for most expansions in the game. Because it's plugin based, it can also be fairly targeted and selective about what you add, and many of the newer plugins also include a useful filters feature so you can control what they actually show, and that's really useful. It's particularly in the latest expansions, because if you have everything turned on, honestly, the map can get a bit busy. Now, one thing I will caution about Handy Notes is it does duplicate some of the information in Rare Scanner, but overall, I've found the Handy Notes plugins to be a bit more comprehensive. So I certainly have both of them because it helps me fill in the gaps that come from Rare Scanner. Very similar to Handy Notes is the Tomcats Tours add-on. Like Handy Notes, it puts useful icons in the map for important rares and other treasures, but it also has some useful extra functionality. For example, once you've killed a rare, it will put a tick on the map so that you know there's no point going back and doing that rare again. And in some of the newer zones, it will also turn the rare icons red if other Tomcats users encounter the rare, which can be really useful if it's spawning across the other side of a zone. Own. Uh, Tomcats also comes with a bunch of extra useful tools for helping you with World of Warcraft's holiday events, which are another great source of collectibles. Now, while there's a fair bit of overlap between Handy Notes and Tomcat, I personally find that it's useful to have both of them, as neither of them give complete 100% coverage. So I, I think, yeah, it's definitely worth having the both. Now, a big part of collecting is running old instances, and there's a couple of useful tools for this. First up is saved instances. Saves to Instances is a tool that helps you track your lockouts. You can see at a glance which characters have run any given raid and which can still run it, which where you've done, say, rares and world bosses, and so on. It also has a useful built-in tracker for the 10 instances per hour limit that exists in World of Warcraft, which I certainly find it's very easy to hit that limit when I'm running dungeons especially. So, and now, if you're wondering what that limit is, World of Warcraft has a limit where you can only enter 10 instances in any rolling 60 minute period per realm. Because it's a rolling limit, it's actually quite hard to figure out manually when you've hit the limit and when you can next do one. And saved instances is, will be really, really useful when it comes to tracking that. The other instance tool is Instance Achievement Tracker. Now this is specifically aimed at the dungeon and raid glory of achievements, many of which award mounts. There's quite a few of those achievements that are soloable, but even if you're doing the achievement in a group, this tool is super useful as it helps to track not only your progress, but the progress of your teammates towards meeting achievements, and it'll give you a useful alert when you've met the achievement and it's safe to kill a boss. Now, a lot of the more desirable collectibles in game are random drops, which usually means you'll have to do them over and over again. Now, the in-game statistics feature does track boss kills and even some uh, dungeon kills, but most of the stuff 
isn't tracked. So if you'd like to get a handle on just how many times you've opened that chest or fished in the sea for that rare item, then rarity is definitely for you. It won't tell you where to find an item, but it will let you know how many times RNG has let you down. And when the item does finally drop, you'll get a cool pop-up to tell you. Now, I've actually lost count of how many times I've been doing some rear chasing and when the items dropped I haven't actually realised it's got in my bag and you definitely don't want to keep on fishing for that sea turtle when it drops so that pop-up's actually surprisingly useful and it does help to give you that you know just moment of excitement when it actually appears. Now I'm going to go back to websites now and it's now for the turn of data for Azeroth. This is a site that attracts achievements and collection. It has some similarities to Simple Armory, but it presents the information very differently. But for me, the main value add of data for Azeroth is that it will show you what proportion of the player base already has something. So for example, if you want to know if that particular mount you got is actually a rare 1% mount or it's actually something everybody except you already had, then data for Azeroth is the site to go for. I personally don't find its layout good for planning, but when it comes to curiosity or even just figuring out a bit of flex around your collection, it's definitely great. I'm now going to move on from tools that you use to collect stuff and onto tools that can help you manage your collections. I mean, what's the point of having 800 mounts if you only ever use three of them? World of Warcraft does have a built-in random mount feature, but I've always found it to be a bit suboptimal. For example, summoning a winged dragon in a no-fly area just because its legs really doesn't float my boat. Now, Light Mount is an add-on which is a much smarter random summoning rule set, but it also adds a bunch of other features like groups and filters that can allow you to customise your summoning. If you want your mount to be themed around the zone you're in, for example, you can totally set that up. Now, as a quick tip, I've also been able to add a little bit of custom config to Light Mount to automatically apply the new toy that randomizes dragon riding appearances, which means I can reliably get randomized dragon riding appearances without even having to mess about actually using the toy whenever the buff it gives drop off. Now, I'm going to put that config in a pinned comments down below in case you want it. But yeah, I definitely recommend this mount very strongly to anybody out here who's a keen mount collector. Now another random tool is the Tomb of Teleportation. This is essentially an add-on that displays all the possible teleporters that you have in your character on one page, which in and of itself is actually super useful. But one of the features it has is that it can optionally randomize the Hearthstone toy from your collection and as somebody who's recently just started collecting toys I've been finding this a really super cool addition. Now the next add-on again isn't really collection specific but as there's a lot of things that you can collect from quests, sometimes one issue that can come up is trying to figure out how to even get a specific quest to become available. And really in game, it really doesn't make it clear what the prerequisites for quests are. BTW Quests turns out to be the solution to this. BTW shows the progress on most quest lines in a zone, so you can easily see where you got to in a particular quest line and what you need to pick up to restart it, for example. Or it can allow you to work backwards from the specific quest you actually want to do to find the starting point for a quest line you want to complete. Now, the very last add-on is probably the most powerful tool for collectors out there, and I'm sure many of you have been waiting for me to mention this one, but this is also a tool which, if you're struggling to figure out where to get started with collections, this tool can be a bit of an impediment. This is, of course, the All The Things add-on. This is an add-on for WoW completers. It tracks about everything you can possibly do in the game. It will highlight what you've done and what you have not. The pop-up window, which is context sensitive, will, for example, help you find the stuff in your current zone that you haven't done. It will also tell you on a per character basis or on a per account basis how complete you are. And let me tell you, 
account basis completion, it's usually pretty depressing. And that's, well, the downside. Once you see what you can miss in, pretty much the first reaction is to realize how impossible a journey to completion it will be if you ever want to get to 100%. Now, personally, I rarely use ATT for this purpose. So why am I recommending it here? Well, it's actually for the tooltip. ATT adds a bunch of very useful information from collections into tooltips. It will tell you where an item comes from, if you've already collected it in any character, what the item can be used for. For example, it will tell you how much of a currency you need to have to complete your collection. So even if it's something that does have that risk of being a bit overwhelming, I do recommend giving it a go, even if you disable the main window and just stick with the pop-up. Now, the very last tool I'm going to talk about here is actually a built-in game tool. Collecting stuff, it will take you out into the open world a lot, and you're going to be spending a lot of time in Stormwind and Ogdemar teleport rooms. If you're in the guild, then the guild vendor has up to three, and I say up to because some of them require guild unlock, so it's possible your guild won't have them all unlocked. But there's three cloaks which all have a teleport ability to Stormwind. These have very long cooldowns, between two to eight hours, but usefully their cooldowns are independent, so you can use all three one after the other if you want to, for example. And that makes them a super useful supplement to your Hearthstone. Now, on that subject, if you've ever done the Brawler's Guild and have at least three K-ish Brawler's Gold lying about, while the Brawler's Guild hasn't been in-game for a couple of expansions now, the vendors are actually still there and they will sell you a ring which has a teleport to the Guild. Now, the Guild's not as convenient a location as a portal room, but the ring's one-hour cooldown does actually mean that this can still be pretty useful. And if you want an even shorter cooldown, if you have some 7th Legion or Honorbound Service Medal from BFA, you can get a ring to teleport to Boralus and Zandalar from this the medal's vendor. Both of these areas have portals back to Stormwind, and with those rings being in a 30 minutes cooldown, that does make them pretty useful. And by the way, if you had those rings in the past and found the 30 second cooldown and equip annoying, that's actually been recently removed. So you can now equip it and use it right away. Okay, so that's actually all the tools I wanted to share with you. So if you're only interested in the tools and you're already a bit of a collecting veteran, you're definitely welcome to drop off now because the next little section is just going to be a little bit of a rant and discussion and advice on how to get started collecting if you're struggling to figure out how to get into it and how to get over that feeling of being overwhelmed. Now, my own introduction to collection was actually back in late Legion when I was leveling up the very first character I'd ever leveled up in World of Warcraft. I was over in Feralis and I saw a player fly overhead in a Twilight Drake. Now, I didn't know much about collections and mounts at the time, so seeing a player on a flying dragon was just so awesome to see. And that was the moment when I set my heart on getting one of those dragons. And that desire to get dragons eventually blossomed into a goal to get all the drake mounts. And that's a goal that took me into Elite BFA. Now, it was getting that goal that actually led me to Simple Armoury and the Mount Planner. And seeing that Mount Planner always just kind of nagged in the back of my mind saying, you know, you could go and just use that planner, get a few other mounts, you know. So eventually I started to set aside one night a week where I would just run through the planner and I would just go as far as I could before I ran out of time in that night, which, you know, wasn't actually all that far into the planner because it's really big if you haven't done any collections. But, you know, over time you start to get those mounts, which means you have a bit more time to go down through the planner. And today, you know, all that's left in the planner for me and my main I can do it in about an hour and a half, which is actually a bit sad. I miss those days when I could just spend an entire night in those old instances not getting any mounts. Now, from there, I then expanded to set other goals in mount collecting. For example, I set a goal to get all the mounts that you can get from in-game vendors that they sell for gold. And then I... Uh, 
that led me into a really long term project where I would do one daily thing every day that I played the game uh, with the goal of that re leading me to mounts. Anyway, that's me just rambling a little bit. The point I'm trying to make with this is that the best way to get going is to set some specific goals and, and start with something small like all the Drake mounts or maybe just doing that planner and just start picking those goals off one by one because what will happen is eventually you'll meet those goals and then you'll have to find another one. I, I personally, I started Shadowlands. I think I had about 160 mounts and today I've hit 830 mounts. And honestly, I'm at a point where, you know, that's just the new mount goals drying up now. So I'm moving on to toys. I've been chasing Hearthstone toys, for example. There's actually, there is so much in game that you just have to pick something cool, something that interests you and then start chasing it as a goal and and don't, now don't worry about what will happen when you finish that because when you do it there'll be plenty more things that will tickle your fancy i promise one of the i think the great dangers of world of warcraft collections is that it's a thing that just escalates over time you know as you get more and more used to do it it's never quite enough to just have 500 mounts isn't it you want to have more you want to be like those other dudes that have huge amounts don't you I think as MMO players, we often fall into that trap of trying to consume all the content ASAP. But collecting is just one of those areas that's just far too big for that. And you know, I actually personally prefer having a process of setting individual games because, you know, I don't really want to be done. I, I want to always have something to do in the game and by spreading things out and just, you know, kind of managing the time of spread in the game, it just makes it a lot easier. Anyway, I, I hope that kind of rant's been a little bit helpful about setting goals. The TLDR is pick a small goal and chase it. Don't worry about not having as many mounts as the next guy trust me if you start doing that once the bug gets properly embedded it'll change fast enough mark my words anyways that's all for now but if you do have any other collection related tools you'd like to share with folk do let us all know in the comments below i'd be super interested in seeing if there's anything else out there that i can put to good use and if you found this video useful also do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon that will ensure you'll be notified as soon as i upload a new video and also hit the like icon down there this helps to let both me and youtube know that this type of video is worth doing more of but anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you all again soon.